Hello and welcome to the Homeless Consultants channel. My name is Paul B. I am the Homeless Consultant. Today, I don't know the temperature out there, but it's supposed to be a heat index in the 90s. So in this car, it's probably 95, 100, 105 or something. The only thing I want to talk about is this. I went to this uh, little strip mall here in uh, Burnsville, Minnesota. And... There were two women, um, I don't know, I would say maybe from Syria, perhaps. Two women and two small children, maybe four or five years old. One woman and the two children, the woman was sitting in one of those tiny little fabric chairs, you know, that you can barely fit in, kitty chair. The two kids were sitting on the ground. The other woman was, the older woman, was standing up at the corner with a big sign saying hard times, lost job, etc. So I went over and I talked to her. Um, the stay-at-home order, Governor Waltz's stay-at-home order cost her her job. Um, anyway, I helped her out as I could and, and then I asked her, um, you know, what, what do you need? Do you have a place to stay? And she's like, no, I'm trying to raise enough money for a hotel room. And I said, well, what do you need? And she, you know, it's a little hard to understand her, but um, she was pointing to the chairs, and I, I could understand her enough. But she wanted to get two little chairs for those little kids so that they wouldn't have to sit in the um, on the ground and get all these bugs and everything crawling all over them. And, um, so I, I mean, I, I have $20 left. So I went out and I, um, I drove to all the stores. I thought she was pointing at Aldi's. So I went into all these stores that I normally won't go into. I just boycott them. And I, I went into Aldi's, I went into Walgreens, I went into a pool and spa place, I even went into Target. I don't know if I've been in a Target in 20 years or so. I've had to boycott them for so long. And no one had them. Um, finally I came back to where I started. I even went to a Salvation Army. Um, I came back to where I started next to Aldi's. There's a hardware store, so I went into the hardware store. And they had exactly probably what she was pointing at in the first place rolls up in a nice little bag about this big it's it's one of those kind of open chairs you just sit in um, for kid size folds up into that little case and they were like sixteen ninety five so that's going to be just under eighteen dollars after tax they had two kids so i asked for the manager and i i told the manager there's a homeless uh homeless family out there they seem to be new at it I'm not sure they know how to survive and it's it's in the 90s here and it's about the thunderstorm I'd like to get two of these chairs for them I only have enough money for one and I said can I leave my driver I said because uh, I'm back to work now thank praise God I am back to work now Tomorrow I get my first paycheck. Tomorrow, which is it's 4:30 right now, so that's going to be about 16 hours or so. I'll have the money in the bank. And I said, "Can I leave my driver's license with you? Let me go give this family this other chair, and I'll come back tomorrow and pay you for this and get my driver's license back." Now keep in mind, my tags are expired. I can't ex I can't renew my tags yet. They have to open up the DVS, and I have to be able to actually get in there. So if I get pulled over, I will have no tags and no driver's license. But I'm willing to do that to help these people out. And I, I, I had made some casual reference to how uh, Governor Waltz's stay-at-home order blew her job out of the water, too. And the guy suddenly changes his demeanor and he's like, I vehemently disagree with that. I know Governor Waltz and that is not true. Reminds me a lot of, remember when the stay-at-home order was first announced, the day before it even took effect? And I called up the governor's office and talked to that aide who gave me the bogus phone number to call her, her cell phone, which was a non-working number. 
And she said, oh, he's the nicest, most empathetic man I've ever met. And then if you look at my video, Governor Waltz exposes himself, you'll see that he never even mentioned the homeless throughout all of his tweets. He mentioned baseball, he mentioned his dog, he mentioned his cat, he mentioned hamburgers, but he never even mentioned the homeless. And this hardware store manager or owner or whatever sits there and is real stern with me telling me that Governor Tim Waltz is nothing like that. I want to show you something, folks, because I don't know how to get this through to people. I just don't know how to do it. And I want to see if maybe this will help, okay? Here's, here's Governor Tim Waltz's life, okay? First of all, he has not just a house, but a mansion right now. And even when he didn't live there, I presume he had a pretty decent house. He lives in a house based on his tweets where I get to see his dog and his children and his cat and his wife and everyone else. They're all smiles. Everybody's just happy, 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 happy. They're putting even the little ones just happy, happy, happy. That's Governor Tim Waltz's life. Okay, now let me tell you about my life and the other 20 thousand homeless people in Minnesota. You see, when it comes to the home, they don't have one, do they? They have nothing. Okay, and when you look at them, here's what you get is a bunch of frowns and people who just want to die. And I'm going to keep this up here as I talk about this guy at the hardware store who thought he knew it all. This guy didn't know a single thing that went on. And with one statement, I know Governor Walls. He's nothing like that. The guy negated my experience that I've documented on this channel over the last two months. Times 20,000. These Minnesotans are insane people. They are absolutely insane. They, their, their detachment from reality is, is something I can't bear anymore. I've got to get out of the state because I can't stay with these kinds of maniacs, these lunatics anymore. I can't do it. Because that hardware store guy is over here. The aide who gave me the bogus phone number, she's over here. But the rest of us are over here. And they can't seem to figure out that this exists. And they don't seem to care. The only thing they do is open their, close their mouth, telling us how much they care. But they're not doing anything. The homeless guy is the one out there trying to help this homeless family. Not the hardware store guy. Not Governor Tim Waltz. Not the aide who gave me the bogus phone number. And I want to say one last thing. When I bought, when I spent the rest of my money and I bought that last, that one chair for the two kids, As I got out of the car and I had that bag, you should have seen a little bit of a smile on her face. And then the other woman, she kind of points to the two kids and smiles and all that, and they start talking for a moment. And I talked to this woman for a brief moment. And finally, one of the kids, I guess they decided who gets it, one of the kids runs up to me. Damn these Minnesotans to hell. Before you ever tell me that Governor Tim Waltz gives a damn about another human being, think about this.